So y'all remember my little, my little protein pudding recipe? Two scoops of the Eat Smart with like a half a cup of water roughly and you stir it up till it looks like pudding. The vanilla Eat Smart, I don't like vanilla, I'm a chocolate guy, yet the vanilla Eat Smart actually ends up tasting way better, in my opinion, when you're making the pudding. Call it sludge, whatever you want to call it, right? Well, check out this little addition to the recipe that Ariana discovered. She gave me the idea for this. Cool Whip. Ask me how many calories Cool Whip has. Ask me. It has about 20 calories. You're only looking at three grams of fat, I believe, and one gram of carbohydrates. One gram of fat, three grams of carbohydrates. I had that backwards. So Cool Whip is still actually quite lean. It's mostly just air. <laughs> Throw that in there. Ooh, that is the best tasting thing you will ever taste in your entire life. Yeah. Link to all the ice story stuff is in the info box below. Link to the Cool Whip. I'm just kidding. Just go in the Stop and Shop or your nearest grocery store and tell them NWB for a 50% discount code on Cool Whip. Whoa, word on the street is Nick Wright was deadlifting at Ocean State and he cracked the floor open. Just kidding guys, my deadlift isn't that good, but that's why I'm in the gym here today. Now, high reps in powerlifting, what? Those two don't even go hand in hand. Most people I speak to who don't actually powerlift always talk about how powerlifters are only good for low reps. They have no sort of muscular endurance because they don't practice high reps, which is actually very, very false. Pause. Note that I'm warming up here by pause squatting 135. A pause and a bounce is actually a very good way to warm yourself up for squats and get your mobility work warmed up as well without having to do all the mobility exercises. Fun fact. Anyway, back to the story. There's a video on YouTube in which they take a powerlifter, an Olympic lifter, a strongman, and a bodybuilder, and they put their own body weights on the barbell, and they give them an X amount of time to complete as many reps as they can possibly get before gassing out with their body weight on squats. Well, fat, long story short, the powerlifter and the Olympic lifter ended up tying and both winning. The powerlifter had the most stamina. Stamina training or muscular endurance training is very important in powerlifting. So today, that's what we're tackling. 315 on the bar, three sets, eight reps. Welcome to squat day number two of week number one. This is muscular conditioning week. Now, the key to really building from the ground up is to eliminate all weaknesses before they can become weaknesses. So this week we're actually tackling lighter weight, higher reps to really nail down that muscular conditioning. And when you gain that muscular conditioning, it really has a big impact on blowing up your one rep max strength. Uh, the more endurance you have in yourself, the more easily you'll be able to handle bigger weights. And of course, this will train your core to stay nice and tight. Of course, the higher reps you go with a decent weight, the looser your core wants to become and finally give out as it fatigues. So doing these higher reps with a decent weight like this is going to actually train your core to become stronger, thus giving you a stronger core when it comes to the big lifts. So remember guys, powerlifting is a combination of all styles of training, completeness. Keep in mind guys, three days ago on Monday, this same week, I was doing my first squat day of the week, which was four sets of six reps with 335. It was supposed to be 355, but I dropped the weight that day to keep the form nice and clean. So this is going to be the second workout of the week, tackling squats and deadlifts. Slightly lower weight, slightly higher reps. Deadlift time, immediately following squats, we're going to do two sets of deadlifts, eight reps for each set, using only about 70, 75% of your one rep max, so the weight is not that challenging at all. However, what's going to make this challenging is the fact that you just did all those high reps on squats, and the fact that this is your second time deadlifting and squatting in the same week, and the fact that the week before this, 
Week number six of the program, you were just doing very low repetition work. So this is going to be a shock to the body overall. Your posterior chain will probably be extra fatigued and jello -y. You're going to be gasping for wind and sweating a lot. It's normal. Just accept it and embrace it. But uh, the workout went great. My reps were a little tap and go. That was somewhat unintentional. I do like resetting between every rep, as you guys should all know. However, the adrenaline got the best of me. All good, though. A lot of pro powerlifters, or elite powerlifters, I should say, like Richard Hawthorne, do actually use tap and go, so it can work, though I do like resetting. Anyway, guys, two sets of eight. Buy a t-shirt, nwblifestyle.com in the info box below. Tank tops, t-shirts, hoodies, dog tags, you name it. Support and represent the lifestyle you live.